everything's about control when you're making a movie. You want to control the sun if you could. If you could laugh <laughs> it, bring it up and down every time you wanted it. So you're racing for the sun or you can, you're, or the sun's coming up and you're shooting nights. Everything you want, every element you want of filmmaking is controlled. You get to the desire that you want to build everything. Evacuating the building! Oh, thank God, I need your help. I'm staying here, I'm not leaving. It's a Category 5 hurricane going on outside, you forgot about that. I think it's a 5 already? What's going on, Michael? Hey, what's going on, Jim? Uh, just hang in there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Where are you at? Just got to LA a few days ago. Was in Chicago for about three months during the quarantine with family because I'm from Chicago. So still kind of adjusting back to LA. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm in Montana right now. And this morning I was out. I've been location scouting for a project that I hope to shoot. You know, come this left after some of this COVID. Uh -huh. I was passing a old, I was passing an old brick building in Great Falls, and it said Milwaukee, Chicago, and it was the three cities that were converging and bringing a lot of supplies. And so I, I saw Chicago today, so it's nice that I, see, that I hear your, your voice and somewhat of an accent. Uh-huh. Wow, that's so interesting. You were able to find that all the way out there. That's... Yeah, well, I was driving. Yeah, I was driving. The neat thing about Montana is how much it propelled the industrial age with the copper mines and the mining and what was going on up it appeared a lot of a lot of block of and people started up here they, that's cool I had no idea never been there yeah it's, it's wild it's, 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 it's the wild west uh huh well there you go you see <laughs> working are you there for like just scouting or just in general staying out there I'm scouting oh cool well there you yeah, go a lot of a lot of driving and a lot of new visuals I did I did a picture up here years ago. Mm -hmm. I was able to surf some of the areas that I really enjoy. And then, even though it's not the same type of storyline, I was able to push the area that I haven't been to in a while, which is some of the smaller, smaller cities, which is the Montana High Line. And cut to a cut to a cut bank, cut to a fish, but cut, cut bank and Shelby and mm -hmm. things like that. You know, that's cool that I'm getting a feel for you as a filmmaker because usually on movies, this is a sense of an indie filmmaker in a lot of ways too. You're, you're doing the work of, of locations in a lot of ways, like the big budget productions or, you know, they have their own people to go all around the world. But I, it's really cool. I like that part of you that wants to scout, wants to kind of discover the location for your own films. How much does that actually help you to be able to go and kind of visualize a script that you write or, and direct yeah. to kind of see these locations for yourself and, and visualize what you're putting together? It, you know, it cuts down a lot. Of, it cuts a lot of time. Mm -hmm. cuts somewhat, it cuts some of, the, some of the budget down and the decision making varies there. So if it's in my hands to decide where we're going to shoot this, I like to I love being boots on the ground and I'm very curious about what's around and who built, who settled, who built the place, um, who are the people here now, what they, what they can tell me about the environment, which informs me just so I can inform actors or set designers or production and make them knowledgeable of where they're at too and take pride in that, that we're, in a, we're in certain locations, whether it be Puerto Rico or... Mm -hmm. Or manager, you saw that that they're they're they're, they're going to learn some history about the place they're shooting in. Yeah, that actually brings me into my question. It's really interesting because obviously Force of Nature was shot in Puerto Rico, as you said. So, you know, you don't see that many movies being, in a sense, shot there and, and really bring it to landscape. I'm sure you could have potentially shot this in another place, but I felt it kind of added to the aura of, of the story and the movie. Tell me what kind of prompted you to head out to Puerto Rico, actually, and decide to film there and, and put the movie together and kind of include it in, into the storyline. We, the, the, the original screenplay was set in New York. Mm, wow. Changed the movie a lot, actually, to think about it. Yeah, yeah there, would have been, there would have been all kinds of different forces of natures within that city. And the hurricane, to take down Manhattan, that put people in a real pressure cooking situation, it would it'd be, I wouldn't say it would be much more devastating, but just the magnitude of force to have that type of building where 
Puerto Rico is is more subtle in, in their in their island in their typography and, and they're susceptible being on the ocean, being in the you know being in that, and that's unfortunate because it's such a great island. And when we were when I was down there, I was actually shooting another picture with Al Pacino called Actress Sally. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward I, to I it. Such a wonderful, I had such a wonderful experience with the crew and the production companies that when First Nature came up, I asked if we could bring it to Puerto Rico because one, it, they've had experience and I could use that experience. And two, I had the, I already had a great crew assembled. And I was able to move that, the, this picture right into right into the right in the way so I could make it down there. Is it more difficult for you as a filmmaker, to, or maybe liberating and, and easier, to, in a sense, film in a more remote location instead of like the big cities, you know, with the hubs where Chicago or Vancouver or you know, obviously LA and Atlanta are kind of the big spots now to film around the country? But is it, what is it like to shoot in, in an area like Puerto Rico, like Montana, where you don't necessarily get tons of films coming through? How is it through your experience to like bring a cast? there and just uh, location scouting and stuff and just have is there more freedom or restrictions there how has been your experience to film in kind of more isolated spots or lesser known you know everything's about control when you're making a movie you want to control the sun if you could you can <laughs> it, bring it up and down every time you wanted it so you're racing for the sun or you can, you're when the sun's coming up and you're shooting nights everything you want every element you want of filmmaking is controlled you get to the desire that you want to build everything as you want it to be your thing. You want set built the way you want it because you go into you go into other places and you go, well, that's not the building how I want it. That's not the courtroom that I... So you start compromising by the environment that you're in. So when you go to places that have less infrastructure, you sometimes find more control. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's harder, it's very difficult to shut down a big street in New York City as it is to do Main Street in Montana. Um, that's it. But then also you, don't, you know, also you don't get the New York that you really love. You know, that is one of the greatest cities on earth. And so you, you're trying to figure out how to get, get New York you're not going to find it in Montana, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. You might find it in Toronto. And you, might, you might find it in other places in Eastern Europe. But, you know, it's a, it's a give and take. Every, every time you, it's a compromise, you know. Makes sense. You know, I spoke to Stephanie Kyle last week, um, and we kind of discussed, like, I mean, you've assembled a heck of a cast here with Mel and Emil and obviously yeah. Kate. I mean, it's it's really cool um, to have so many, like, experienced veteran actors in a sense. How do you approach when you have a script like that and, and then you have talent like that? Do you let them to play? Because Stephanie kind of mentioned how she was – bouncing off ideas with a meal and they, they had a lot of fun kind of in a sense improvising uh, certain things uh, tell me when you have an experienced veteran cast like that how do you approach directing them do you allow that freedom do you allow that play and creativity or you kind of like yeah. to stick to the script what's your approach you know, I, let, I let them throw everything they got at it at the, you know, the first couple of takes to see what's bouncing and what's sticking and you know, when you have somebody like Mel in the center of all of this, there's going to be actors that hesitate to tangle with him. And you have somebody like Emil that has to tangle with Stephanie. And Stephanie is relatively new to a film like this, so was able to let them do what they want to do. And then go in and mm-hmm. manage expectations of, hey, as long as you hit this point, we don't we don't mind if you run around here as long as you get to this point. We don't mind if you do this. And it's not a lot of freedom for them. And where Kate is very direct and really wants to know A to B, to, you know, she's very exact about how she wants to approach things. And then, you know, she's also very valid. You just say, say whatever you want right here. Just make sure we wrap it up. And they understand that they're on their toes, too. And it's a, that's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I'll be grown up. Obviously, you guys are kind of uh, you and Kate are in my age range. I, I, I had major crush as many men across the country and Kate growing up uh, watching her throughout the films. So you to be married to her is a major accomplishment, sir. <laughs> and I give you sorts of credit uh, and uh, for that. But tell me what it's like to kind of 
Uh-huh. It's, it's like a, some kind of wonderful when um, Elias Curtis says to, to Eric Stoltz, he goes, hey man, you, you got one of them, you scored for us. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. You know. You're a legend, my friend. Yeah, I know. It's, um, she picked me, so I got lucky. Cool thing is you guys work on most of your projects together on it. What is that balance like? Because, you know, there's certain couples and, and married couples that, you know, are both in the industry, but maybe appear in a movie or two together, but like to keep it separate. Tell me about your relationship kind of at, at home and uh, on set, because you guys are together a lot and working together. How do you approach work and obviously your personal life? How do you kind of balance in a sense and, and be able to work together? Because it seems like you guys have a great working relationship too, since you pretty much appear in almost every project you guys do together. Uh, tell me about that balance of work and home in a sense. It's simple simple answer to that is because we do two different things we're able to bring knowledge of her craft and my craft and blend it together I don't know if it necessarily works if we we're both two actors or we we're both two directors well two directors probably wouldn't work mm-hmm. so well together um, but as an actor director but I mean, you know as two actors we're not in competition of anything that's going on and uh, I think that's probably we complement we complement each other a lot do you guys have like a style of kind of understanding each other? Maybe two more so than, you know, you'd have a, a new actor coming in versus working together and kind of knowing what you're thinking without even maybe saying it, that sort of thing, that sort of perspective. She understands you, what you're kind of thinking and you might, it, does that play into things too sometimes to ease it up? Yeah, we have, after the first film being Big Sur, working with the same actors, you develop a shorthand and then, you know, being with her quite a bit and, traveling and you know being in different places you start to understand somebody's personality better and what they like and my opinion on different art forms and music and she be she starts to understand me as an artist and i start to understand her likes and dislikes and things that she did in the past so we're, we're able not to create new landmines per se mm-hmm. we can we can get those out of the way pretty quick so what we're doing is trying to be as pure as possible and create a new a new space that's cool. That's cool to hear. Well, I know we're pretty much out of time at this point. Just wanted to wrap it up. Uh, one quick question. You know, I'm, I'm curious always about asking filmmakers and actors, what what sort of things you like to do in your personal life, are there hobbies or interests? Because are there any sort of interests and hobbies you like to do maybe with Kate together or alone that, that kind of gets you away from the industry in a sense? Yeah. Drink whiskey. <laughs> that would be one. That's it. That's, that's a great relationship. I mean, I can't do much when I'm. I can't do anything else when I'm with whiskey. But um, it's a it's a fun situation. I mean, other than that, I, I enjoy um you know getting out and riding my motorcycle a lot. Oh, that's cool. See, that's that's a little nugget about you I didn't know. So that's always cool to find out. Well, thanks so much, Michael, for for taking. Yeah, I appreciate your time and thanks for. Asking great questions and, and enjoying the movie. Some of my favorite actors. I always felt Emil is one of my like the greatest actors we have going today, uh, and yeah. definitely looking. Yeah, he's fun. He's- totally, I interviewed him before and really enjoy him. Uh, definitely looking forward to Axis Sally too. So I read up on that. Hopefully, oh, hopefully that will be cool. So hopefully we can uh, catch up down the road and uh, on your next film and uh, continued success. And I, I've been enjoying your and your wife's work for for a long time. So keep it up. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care, Michael. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. I'll shoot you in the head. I'm not going out that way. Remember, shoot to kill, kid. Hey, nice work, kid.